YouTubers and content creation, a job prospect that many dream of having. While it is within the realm of possibility, it does take years of dedication and work, from networking to learning marketing tactics to make your content as widespread as possible. There's a lot that does go into it sometimes. However, a good deal of people do reach this, and once they do, they throw everything down the drain. They throw it all down the drain due to their own misconduct, sexual misconduct in fact. There's a reason YouTubers becoming groomers is a stereo type and joke. But what about the creators who get away with it, that are forgotten so they can rebuild a brand and community under the same name even? And that, my friends, is the unfortunate reality of the individual I will be talking about today. An individual known as Pixel Drink and how he got away with everything. Pixel Drink, also known as BJ or Turtle SSB, is a content creator in the US, specifically LA, that got his start for coaching Super Smash Bros. He was quite good at it, actually. However, his notoriety mostly comes from doing voice impressions for a small anime that you might have heard of, known as My Hero Academia. <laughs> he started on TikTok, as most of the people I cover originate from. It seems TikTok just generates scum like no other platform. And as I said previously, he earned his recognition from doing My Hero Academia voice impressions. He also has a brother that is a commentary YouTuber known as Technicals, who also defended a predator. Just an FYI, <laughs> while he's most known on TikTok, he has an active YouTube channel that panders toward kids who are fans of My Hero. However, I wouldn't be talking about this seemingly wholesome creator if it wasn't for some allegations that would arise. I want to start by saying that I have removed myself from the Smash community for a little over a year now, but I also was still aware of stories coming out within the community. While seeing and reading every story, I was constantly being reminded of a specific moment between us and it felt like it was eating at me. I had no intentions at all of making this public, but after some time passing, I noticed more and more things about BJ coming up and being brought to my attention, so I thought it would be the right thing for any one that's been a victim of this to be a voice for them myself the idea of coming out with any of this is still scary because i am aware of what might come out of this from the idea of ruining someone's reputation to being the center of attention to many i'm not talking about any of this out of spite or to cause harm. I believe we stopped talking on good slash neutral terms for about two years, but simply for the idea of him needing to be held accountable for his actions, such as these. Anyways, I will now talk about what happened. I will begin with my personal issue. For most people that know BJ, you may know he's a pretty good artist. He would, he would constantly share drawings he's made on his social media and to a friend group chat because they were really nice and it's a skill to be proud of. I don't know if it's as well known, but he was also very much into creating NSFW art as well. No matter what he drew, I would usually appreciate it simply because it was so well done, NSFW or not. I remember one night opening Discord, finding out that he had made a very graphic drawing of my friend 16 and I, 17, having intimacy. He sent it to our Discord server. To me, this was extremely disturbing and disgusting. I did not consent to this, plainly said. I felt violated by this drawing's existence. He was also 19 at the time of making it, which makes it even more disturbing that he made a drawing involving two real-life minors. Remember, not fictional characters. To him and a few others, it was seen as a really funny drawing, and they posted it over and over, laughing about it. But I remember expressing how uncomfortable I was over it. It is beyond me why he would do this, but he also proceeded to upload the drawing to the Rule 34 website. There are screenshots as well as proof of the drawing being made and being uploaded. It is heavily censored. This is not something that I want to show to everyone. An issue with this is going back to that site, you will find the image has been deleted by artist requests. I find this detail interesting because I had visited this site exactly three days ago to make sure it was still uploaded and it was there. I don't have any proof of this, so you can take my word for it. This means he went back and deleted it within these past few days, likely because of the allegations made against him recently. It makes sense that he'd wanted to cover this stuff up. I still have the drawing in my possession, but I really hope this is proof enough for anyone reading because this drawing is extremely gross and humiliating to me to this day. I'd rather not share it to the public myself. Here's a screenshot of the Rule 34 page taken earlier today to show that it was taken down. Now I want to address another problem with BJ. I don't think there's too much explanation that we'll need to go into these simply because it is all in the screenshots. To give context, there were a few people involved in a group chat 
in which I believe the majority of the members' ages range from 13 to 16, while BJ himself was 19 at this point. I believe there are some messages and screenshots saved from interacting with them and sending nude images of himself. You will see that these are all in Facebook Messenger and under the nickname NV Adams. Every image you see is timestamped individually. The rest of the people involved here are censored but color-coded for privacy reasons. They've chosen to be hidden and we have to respect that. In the next pair of screenshots, you can see him imply that he would be sending a nude image and is immediately informed and reminded of the 13-year-old being in chat. They're also mentioned in the last pair of screenshots, so this information isn't new to him. Looking at the timestamps, you can see he disregards and proceeds to send the images anyways. The final set of screenshots are just a collection of him repeatedly sending nude images of himself to the same group chat over and over while knowing it is full of minors. By the way, he responds so you can tell this is no accident. You can take this information and feel any way you'd like to about it. If it seems like I left holes or am wrong anywhere, please let me know so I may clear stuff up. I've considered talking to BJ many times over the these past few days and I know I could have, but the more I think about it, I think about how neither of us would get anything out of it. I want to state again I didn't do this to harm him, but for him to be held accountable. I feel horrible being the one to let this out, being the one to tell these experiences. I believe in redemption and growth, but in this case, maybe it has to be done somewhere else. Because these are decisions that you make that should be taken seriously. It's important for people to know because no one knows stuff like this can or will ever happen again. Thank you to anyone who took the time to read all of this. And that is most of the evidence for the twit longer. Definitely shouldn't be doing this, just saying. Uh, as you can see from this account alone, Pixel Drink should not be in, in an active community of minors. His YouTube channel itself, as I said previously, is pandering to kids. In a community full of minors, the internet has also allowed him to keep his career after these findings or after all of this stuff came out. But Ren, he was 19, he was still young. I do not care. I was 19 a year ago and was always aware of being mindful of what I sent to my groups online. It should be common knowledge coming into the age of like adulthood in general to be mindful of what you're sending and who you're sending that stuff to. You should always be careful. You should always ask. There shouldn't be any confusion like this. This should have never happened to begin with. He knowingly sent these images to a group chat with the understanding that there were minors in this group chat. And now that I've gone through the first twit longer, I will be reading through one that follows follows up with the original with additional context, I believe, to the first. I believe what this twit longer is referring to is the fact that Technicals, the commentary YouTuber from before, Pixel Drink's brother, had made a video debunking everything, and I don't think it's still up. I might be able to find a clip of it somewhere. It spun a whole different tale and said that everyone was in the same group chat, everyone was sending nudes and stuff like that when that just wasn't the case to make Pixel Drink look less bad. I'm someone that was present throughout the group chat discourse revolving around technicals and turtle SSB, now pixel drink. The story has become very misconstrued, so I'm addressing some other some of their claims and responses. Issue 1, the timeline and story of the group chats is incorrect. Early 2016, technicals was the owner of group chat 1, with maybe around 40 to 50 people. All were members of the Super Smash Bros club from different high schools. By the time any of the events occurred, that group chat was narrowed down to the active members, ending up with about 20 to 25-ish members. At this point, Tech had already forfeited the ownership of the group and was rarely involved. He simply was not as present as he claimed to be. In fact, he wasn't even in the group chat most of the time because he would get kicked for arguing and harassing others. He was not the owner or leader of this group chat, nor did he run any other chat. There was no leader. It was a group of friends and Smash players. This is the group chat where everything took place. 
place. The running joke of making NSFW art of each other was not a running joke. Pixel has made at least five drawings that I know of depicting real life miners, each being fully rendered with color and detail. The drawing mentioned in the Twit Longer was made without the consent of the two involved, but anything made after that was created with consent. Despite that, he still created high detail NSFW art of miners. There was less than that many drawings made by one other person who was a miner at the time. The drawings were very poor quality and made in MS Paint. These are the ones posted and mentioned by Tech and Pixel. It is also important to include Pixel was the first one to make and send an NSF drawing depicting other members, banning several months. Any other drawings were made in one night by one other person. There existed a group chat consisting of five people total. Two were 16 year olds, 16 year olds, three were 17 year olds. I'm one of the five people. The chat consisted of all minors and was created to give the group a place where it felt okay and safe to talk about sexuality, gender, and just being edgy kids away from the adults. The existence of this chat had zero correlation to Pixel and Tech. It wasn't their business, yet they still made it their business. Business. The only reason it was brought up or talked about by them was because the members within this chat would leak contents of what we spoke about to them without us knowing. So yes, there was a group chat where we talked about lewd topics and a few nudes were sent to each other, but the only reason Pixel knew about this and saw these nudes was because he invaded the space of minors to begin with. Tech as well. We don't know about the other, about how much he knows, but it is certain that they received sexual information from a group of minors from another minor. In conclusion, even though he was a member of the group chat, Technicals was not the leader and is not directly responsible for his brother's actions. No minors sent nudes in the public chat or any chat for anyone to see. The misunderstanding originated from a lie to make everything seem not as bad. Tech and Pixel did not create or run an environment where teens spoke about adult topics, but Pixel actively participated in it. For the other adults present, no one else was overly sexual with us, and I believe they also hold zero responsibility for his actions. I don't have evidence to provide on most things besides fake timestamps and drawings themselves, so you can either take my word for it. For the last issue, there were many people there and it was truly traumatizing to be betrayed and humiliated by my own friends. Learn to respect victims and not DM people related to hound them for info. I am only speaking on this because everyone believes a story that didn't happen. Pixel Drink is still not innocent by any means. And while the these occurrences happened in 2016 to around 2018, I believe there's still another allegation to go through. This person goes by the name Sarah Nico and came out and provided another twit longer with her testimony. This person also provided an interview with the YouTuber who I got most of this information from, known as Advil. This video was very well done and his interview with Sarah Nico was very insightful. I totally recommend you watch his video for more for a more like in-depth dive. I'm just covering this to keep it up there, you know, to keep the conversation rolling. His video and interview with Sarah Neko will be linked in the description though and the comment section. My experience with Turtle SSB. This has been something that I've had to live with for over a year now since it happened, and I was always too afraid to say anything or speak up in fear of causing drama or being demonized due to his status in the Smash scene and seeing how liked he was in the community. It's also something that I've avoided speaking about because I've tried my hardest to pretend it didn't happen and speaking about it will only cause me to relive it. However, I feel it's important for me to share my experience with Turtle, not for myself, but because I notice how many women, especially younger women, are in the same community as him. Last year, in February 2019, I was raped by Brendan Jackson, Turtle SSB. Him and I were having sex and I told him that I didn't want him to finish. I was too nervous and it was too risky. When I told him I didn't want him to do it, he told me that he was going to anyways. I kept saying no and at least five times, but again, he kept saying it was, he was going to do it anyways. I ended up giving up on arguing with him him. He insisted on doing it and I couldn't win that fight. I didn't want to have intimacy at that point. I was too scared to tell him to stop. Instead of using my words, I tried to nudge him off of me. I'm not sure if he did or didn't get the hint, but nonetheless, he never cared. 
He never cared about my boundaries of when I wanted to stop having intimacy and when I didn't want him to shim me. So again, it was a fight I wasn't going to win. Didn't want to have intimacy anymore, so, so I was hurting and completely done at that point. And I couldn't say anything about it. He ended up finishing in me and as soon as he pulled out, I was bleeding everywhere. My whole body was in pain and it felt like I was experiencing period cramps and I bled for the entire day. He ended up calling me one month later and told me sorry for being pushy, I guess. While BJ and I were in a relationship, he added me to one of his Discord servers and I was able to scroll up and see previous conversation. I saw that he sent a hyper-realistic drawing of a new underage person. It couldn't be older than 12. He sent it along with a intimate message about the underage drawing. I later found out that BJ had a 16 year old girlfriend while he was 20 to 21 years old and I was also told by one of his old friends that he had he had intimacy with a 15 to 16 year old girl while at another friend's house. Thank you for reading this to everyone that did. I genuinely hope Brendan slash turtle has grown up since this happened. I don't want anything bad to happen to him. I do believe that people can learn and grow. That's really all I hope for. However that doesn't excuse any of what he did at all and I believe he should be held accountable. I feel like that's the only true way to learn and grow from your mistakes. In the meantime, I really do advise the girls and women in the smash scene to just please, please be careful. Not only from him, but any man in that scene in general who's older than 18. Thank you. As made evident time and time again, this man cannot be trusted around children or women in general. He cannot control himself. The fact he's able to keep his platform and his audience is truly appalling. He should not be allowed to continue continued pandering to kids, made it more than obvious that he cannot be trusted around these kids. He has continued these mistakes since 2016, which is just the earliest found evidence. It could go back further and we do not know if this behavior is continuing to this day as well. His audience might forget, but the rest of us on the internet will not forget. This person is dangerous and it's, it's not the first time the internet has let a person who's had misconduct with minors get off scot-free. Think about James Charles and how he's still selling makeup palettes and who still garners support from people. TikTok seems to be fully gullible. It seems to be full of gullible people who are willing to forget as long as you don't bring it up. And as upsetting as that is, all we can do as bystanders is remind them why they shouldn't forget. Not only for the sake of past victims, but for the sake of what could be future victims. I found comments on TikTok saying that they could never hate pixel drinks solely because they're unaware of this behavior. The more we keep these conversations going, the better it is for those who might be further victimized. Anyways, I'm Ren. I'm tired and thank you for watching. Also join my Discord server or subscribe. All links are in the description.